Good morning. morning. And happy Mother's Day. We want to welcome those who've joined us online as well. A couple announcements to put on your calendar. First, that uh, you can take home one of our Embrace baby bottles today and bring it back on Father's Day. It's part of Ascension's support of that ministry for moms and their children. And on your calendar, be sure to put VBS. That's coming up the second full week of June. And if you've got a a kid, a grandkid, or a neighbor kid, you're going to want to be part of that uh, coming up in June. And uh, the rest of the announcements are in the folder, but today we have a very special opportunity to welcome Ramona into God's family through holy baptism. So I'm going to invite her her family to come on forward to the baptismal font at this time. Well, Ramona, this is a big day. Yes, you're going to be welcomed into God's family through holy baptism, and we have some water right here. Look at that. Yeah, and we're here at the baptismal font because Jesus has given a promise, and his words are recorded for us in the very last chapter of Matthew. Jesus said, go make disciples of all nations baptizing them, which means to wash them with water, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. The holy apostles of our Lord have written that baptism is for you and your children, and baptism now saves us. See, we learn from the Word of God that we were all conceived and born sinful, and we would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy sent Jesus, and whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And so, Ramona, receive then the cross of Jesus, both upon your forehead and your heart, marking you as one redeemed by Jesus, the crucified. Moms and dads were bringing their children to Jesus that he might pray for them and bless them and When his friends saw this, they thought that was just beneath Jesus, and so they tried to stop it. And when Jesus saw them trying to stop the little kids from coming, he was indignant. And he said, do not hinder the little children from coming to me, for I tell you, no one enters the kingdom of God unless they have faith like a little child. This is the gospel promise for us all. Now, it looks like you have a few people with you. And and you have the big job of joining with mom and dad here in, in helping Ramona grow in the faith which means you'll be praying for her and sharing your faith in Jesus. And uh, the basics of the faith, the Lord's Prayer, Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, the stories of the Bible, if you're willing to do this task, then say yes with the help of God. Oh, did you hear that? Lots of people care about you and love you and want to see you grow in the faith. Well, this is mom and dad. And they brought their child here, and and we're going to welcome them into our family here at Ascension. This is a place in which we are all growing in our faith and love for Jesus, and this is where it all starts. And so, Ramona, what's her full name? Ramona Lynn Breeding. Come on, little Clotsy here. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth of water and of the Spirit, who has forgiven you all your sins, bless and keep you this day. Amen. Oh, Ramona, guess what? You have had a new birthday now into God's family. Uh Uh-oh. Thanks, Dad. Which means you get a birthday candle. Oh, look at that. 
And every year, your family can light that candle and remind you, you're a child of God. Wow. All right. And, and some of the ladies in our congregation have knit this together. It's a blanket. And oh, yeah. And one last thing. We have something for your room. We have a cross has your name on it, and the day you were baptized into God's family. All right. Well, let's pray for our newly baptized. Jesus, you are so kind, so loving, so merciful, and you care deeply for us. And you've now welcomed Ramona into your family through holy baptism. We pray that you would guard and protect her faith, that as she grows, she would grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your name that she now bears. We ask this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. All right. Well, Jesus, bless and keep you. Here you go. All right. And I got one more thing here. I got a certificate up there. All right. Well, let's welcome God's newest family. All right. Yes. Well, how can we not worship now? Please stand and sing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We kneel or sit for confession. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We just deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways 
to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son. be with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
first reading is from Acts chapter 17, verses 16 to 31. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked because he saw that the city was full of idols. He reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and devout persons in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some said, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took hold of him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, may we know what this teaching is that you are presenting? For you bring strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Aparagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the object of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives all mankind life and breath and everything, and made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each of one of us, for in him we live and move and, are, and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for, he is, for we are the, indeed the, his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought to think that the divine being is, like, is being like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and the imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed the day on which he will judge the world. In his righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And this, is, and this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Now where is the harm if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile you, good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for good, if that good be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteousness for the unrighteous, and that he might bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh, he made, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey. When God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Baptism, which is, corresponds to this, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven 
and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, we invite some children to come forward for our children's message. Good morning. Do you like to swing? Do you like to swing real high? Oh my goodness. Do you stretch out your legs and your toes and try to touch the sky? Yeah, and it works best if you have someone pushing you. And they push you and they push you and they push you. And you go, I want to go higher. I want to go higher. I want to go higher. And you try to touch the sky and it is so much fun and you don't worry a lot at all because you know that that person that's pushing you you can trust them you know that they're not going to hurt you now I have a question what if someone came up to you and they wanted to push you and you didn't know them would you let them push you I don't think I would let them push me because I don't trust them. And we're going to talk about that word today, trust. And the choir just sang about that too. They just sang about trusting. Now who should we trust? We're going to find out today who we should trust. Our life is kind of like that swing. It's all full of joy and everything and we just want it to be better and better and better. And um, and it doesn't work very well when we try to push it by ourselves. We just can't do it. We can't get very high when we swing by ourselves. We need that person to push us. And that person in our lives that pushes us is Jesus. We trust him, and he pushes us, and he makes our life just wonderful. Well, in the gospel that you're going to hear in a minute, the disciples were a little confused. They had been with Jesus for three years. They trusted him. He was with them all the time. They knew he was going to be with them. And then he says, I'm going to go away. And they went, what? You're going to leave us? You're going to go away? Who's going to be with us anymore? What are we going to do? And he goes, don't worry. He says, I'm going to have my father send you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will live in you. And you can trust that. Well, we do trust that. We trust that the Holy Spirit came into those disciples' hearts, and we trust that the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts. And we saw that in baptism. That's what happened. The Holy Spirit came into that baby's heart today. Isn't that wonderful? And that happened to you, too, when you were baptized. And Jesus lives in you. How do you feel about that? happy. We're, it's so wonderful to know that Jesus always lives in us. We feel joy like we feel on that swing where we're going higher and higher and higher. And like we say higher and higher with Jesus, we want more of Jesus and more of Jesus in our lives. We want to learn more about him. We want to pray more. And we know, we trust that he will always be with us every single day. Let's pray. Pray with me, please. Dear Jesus, thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to live in us. You will always be in my heart. Amen. Thank you for coming.
Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel as we sing the verse. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live in you, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We sing the hymn of the day. Jesus, you have given us the Holy Spirit. The Spirit dwells within each of us. So now, stir up within our hearts a desire to hear, to believe, a desire to be yours. We ask this in your name. Amen. You may be seated.
As you heard in John's gospel, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Love and obedience, they go together. They are so intertwined that to have one without the other is to have neither. For love naturally has a desire to do what the beloved wants. If you do not do what your beloved wants, then you're simply using their love for your own purposes, their goodwill, their affections. And yet, on the other hand, if you are obedient, if you have a compliance but no love, well, then that is just as awful. For you will find yourself quickly going to the lowest common, the least amount that you have to do to be obedient. And there in your heart is no affection, no holding dear the other, but simply doing what needs to be done so that you can finally do what you want to do and be with the people that you truly want to be with. Love and obedience interwoven together, there you will find that your heart longs to please the other, not at a bare minimum, but going above and beyond what is being asked because you want to please, you want to delight in, you want to serve your beloved. It's what love is. It's what it does. It's its very nature. And so we, we see this playing out in a couple. And I'd like you to think about if this has been part of your life when your relationship was young and new and you were naive. Oh, you've been there, okay. Imagine holding a tight embrace, your beloved, and saying very tenderly, Oh, I love you, my darling. And there, hearing in your ear, Oh, you do, do you? Yes, yes, I do. Oh, well, do tell me then what it is that you love about me. Trouble. <laughs> you know that's not a good road to go down now, but you didn't then. And you've got good reasons, and you share them. Oh, my dear, your mind, you're so smart, you're so creative, you're so talented. Oh, your warmth, your, your affection, your, your care, your, your beauty, your skin, your hair, your, you're so striking. Now, all of these are true, and they're from the heart, but for those of us that have been in a relationship a little while, you know a rookie mistake when you see it. What trap now waits for this poor young couple if he has said those things and if she holds them dear in her heart? Well, we all know what happens because if love is dependent upon any kind of attribute or characteristic of your loveliness, of your beauty, of your brains, of your, your just delight to be in, well, you, Nobody is a delight to be in all the time. Nobody's attractive all the time. Nobody has all the characteristics all the time. And if love is dependent on those things, love then is diminished, even absent. And even if it's not spoken, there is this internal worry. Well, am I still as smart and attractive and as fun to be with? Love cannot be dependent on any characteristic. It must be completely string-free. And, well, then what is love based upon then? Well, love is based upon itself. I, I love you because I love you. Now, this is Mother's Day, and you moms, you know what we're talking about here. I know dads do too, but it's Mom's Day. Okay, so moms, you know what this love is when you just love because you, you love, because you know. If you've raised a child or a grandchild or any kid, you know that they're not always pleasant, right? You know? A bit, bit, dif 
defiant now and then. And the words that can come out of their mouth. And you gave birth to them. And, and you, the words they can say to you that are so unloving and hate-filled. But you love them. And to be honest, not every kid's all that attractive. Not every kid's all that smart. Not every kid has a room full of uh, YMCA ribbons and trophies from baseball and, 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 and all the dance things. Oh, she's just wonderful. Not every kid's really good at stuff. But you moms, you love them because you love them. I know it's a circular argument. What do you mean you love them because you love them? That makes no sense. I, there has to be something, and yet there is nothing. It's the very nature of love, and that's a reflection of God's love for you. Why, well, just remember back when God delivered the people from slavery in Egypt. He's, he's taking them to the promised land. He's going to drive out all those people that live in the promised land. And he wants his people to know why he's doing all of this. Why does he love them? Why does he delight in them? Why has he made them his treasured possession? Was it because they were so big and strong and powerful? Because they were so religious and devout? Not at all. God was very blunt when he said with them, to them, you were not. You were the least. And as for your faithfulness, let's just think about our wilderness wanderings, shall we? I love you. I have set my love on you. I have made you my treasured possession simply because I have chosen to do so. I love you because I love you. Now, this gift of love is given so that being first loved, there would be a mutual love. That's how love works. You are loved and then you love in return. We see this in moms and dads when they first bring home their baby from the hospital. Day one, babies do not love you. You are a food source. You're janitorial services. There's a mess, you clean it up. But the mom and dad, they keep holding on to this little one smooching on him, saying sweet little things every day. And then one day, that baby looks at his mom and he goes, Oh, I love you. And there's a smile on that little baby's face. And he can't say it, but he's feeling it. And like, I love my mom. And I love my dad. And if there's a grandma and grandpa, I love them too. Okay, so the babies just, they just, it's born in them. And then they can give it. But here's where our text comes into play when Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. See, the thing is, as we, as we find in our hearts a love for mom and dad, there's many other loves. Yeah, you know, this little baby who just loves his mom, you know what else he's going to eventually love to do? He's going to love putting food over his high chair. He's going to love throwing a fit when it comes to bath time. He's going to love terrorizing the family pet. And in all of these different loves, why, when two of them come together, only one of them can win, right? And ultimately, only one love can rule them all. Jesus says, I'm that love. Love, by its very nature, does what the other desires, but there are many loves, and I am that love. See, Jesus isn't calling us to simply obey commandments. Because you can do that as a compliance, the bare minimum of what he's asking. But your heart is somewhere else. You're doing what Jesus has required so that you can really go do what you want to do. And you know that little baby that grows up with all these different loves? You know what? You know what he turns into us. And we find ourselves very good at hiding what we truly love so no one takes it away. And we become very good at lying and manipulating and protecting and so that I can truly have the thing that I love. And that thing is what Jesus is going after. That I would be not simply the one you obey, but your love of loves. Pastor Tim Keller, retired pastor of Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York, We've studied a lot of his Bible studies. Well, when he was a young pastor, 
back in Virginia, um, he had a, a, a young woman in his uh, youth group, and she was just distraught. Oh, her life is over. Ah, oh, life's terrible. And he could see, you know, what's going on with you? So he, he pulled her aside and into his office, you know, and he listened to her tale of woe. Oh, yeah, oh, that's, that's sad. I know. And then he began to build her up, you know, with, but you know, God loves you, right? You know that, right? You know, Jesus, he went to the cross for you, right? You're that important. You're that valuable. He's, he's always available to you. He's the king, and yet he stoops down to be yours. And this young woman says, yeah, I know, Pastor. I know that he loves me, that he died for me. I know that. But what difference does it make if you can't get a boy to ask you out on a date? And there it is. Of all the loves we have, even though we know Jesus loves us, what's the ultimate love? What's the love that rules all of the loves? See, this, this young woman it's a date, but you and I, well, I, I know that Jesus loves me, but you know what? I just, I just really need things to work out better in my home life. I, I just need people to, to like me. I, I just need to be able to accomplish the goals that I want so I can make the money that I want, so I can have the status that I want, have the house that I want, so I can finally be something. We have many loves. And we love Jesus. But you know what? We're running really hard as a family right now. We're, we're going to this practice. We're going to that game. We're going to this thing. We're going to that thing. And you know what? We, we don't have time, okay, just to be in church. We don't have time to do our prayers and our family. We love Jesus, but you know what? We love these other things. And that's what's in charge of our life right now. You know, I love Jesus. But I got this other thing in my life, and it's, it's just in charge of me. And I know some people would call it addiction, but it, i got to just do what it says because it's, it's the thing that's in control of all other. See, as you hear that Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you find within your heart there's just this resistance, like I know that's the right thing, but it's not the thing that I'm doing, you are, and I are being called to repentance, to put to death, the old, and be brought to life. Or if, if you're just a person like, you know what, I, I know Jesus is a good thing, but he's never really been my ultimate love. And I don't even know how that would happen. Listen to Jesus when he says, I will give you my spirit to dwell in you. And I and the Father, we will come, we will make our home in you. See, you're not trying to manufacture a love for Jesus. You're not trying to force him into your number one spot, even though you really don't want him there because you really want something else there. This repentance, this love, is a gift of the Holy Spirit working in your heart. And it's available right now. It's, it's not a one and done either. It's an ongoing. And so there's a prayer, there's a discipline that I invite you into with these words that you would continue to pray. Jesus, examine my heart. Reorder my many loves around you. And Jesus, the Spirit, and the Father who have made their home in you, they answer that with yes. They, they open that door that's being knocked. They, they grant and they come. And they give you this gift of grace. Amen. I invite you then. Let's make sure we're standing there. Okay, please stand. As we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed, together we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty.
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. At this time, we gather our tithes and our offerings, along with our attendance cards, both for guests and visitors and members alike. Bring them forward to the offering plates at the front of the church, and also give your attention right now to Lene. She's, she's coming up right here. Lene has an opportunity to do some really wonderful and cool things, and we as a congregation get the blessing of sending her. Good morning. I'm Lene Wright. This summer, I will be serving internationally in the business office for the Lutheran Church, Latin America, Caribbean region. This business office is located in Santiago, Dominican Republic, where I'll be sharing my gifts in accounting. The current regional business manager will leave the mission field in June to return to the United States, and a replacement should be arriving in August. I depart June 1st, and I return August 31st. The Latin America Caribbean region includes more than 14 countries, including Cuba, Jamaica, Belize, and Venezuela, just to name a few, as well as 42 church plants, five seminaries, and at least 25 missionary families. The region also includes the country of Honduras, where our youngest son, Aaron, will be returning this summer for the second time to serve in an orphanage sponsored by another organization. Ascension has long supported missions by providing offerings throughout the year to the Kansas District Office and in turn to the Synod's headquarters in St. Louis. This year, through our generosity, our congregation supports the Lutheran Bible Translators, missionaries in China through the Missionaries Christ Network, and also missionaries in India. God invites all of us to take part in the Great Commission. Going on a mission trip isn't the only way to be involved in spreading the gospel. There are several ways you can be part of the support team this summer in spreading the gospel. Number one, prayer support. Prayer is the most powerful tool we have and I'm asking for a faithful commitment from you, my congregation, to consider praying daily from June 1st through August 31st. In the mix area, when you leave this morning, there are 54 individual unique prayer cards, which lists each country in this Latin America Caribbean region, also includes the five seminaries, and most importantly, the missionary families of this region. Today and next week, the display will be available for you to look at and pick up. Consider who God is calling you to provide that prayer support for this summer. Once you've picked up a card, you will be the only one in our congregation with that name or that country. I have provided information on each missionary family that was made available to me. Pray to our Heavenly Father that he would bless these missionaries and use them to share his love with people everywhere. I will be encouraged to know that together, this congregation is praying for the entire Latin America Caribbean while I serve this summer. Number two is financial support. Consider additional offerings that you could provi provide to Ascension for missions this summer. Beginning today, you can find online at our church's One Church Electronic Giving an option to give to international missions. If you want to give through a check, be sure to put in the memo to the church, international missions. If you give cash in an envelope, please label it for international missions. Number three, follow mission updates. I will be sharing the stories of God's mission with you firsthand in Latin America, Caribbean, throughout the summer using church communications, so look in the bulletin or through the church's social media. Lastly, I leave you three guiding principles of ministry from Latin America Caribbean. One, plant churches. Number two, show mercy. And three, spread the gospel. Ask yourself, what?
what is God calling you to do this summer in missions? Thank you. Please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, you have given us a mirror of your love in the daily work of mothers who nurture, guide, and raise their children in all good things. Bless them in their calling. Sustain them through weary and difficult times. Remember in compassion all who are unable to have children and bring them comfort through the children of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, you love us and have given yourself into death that we might be your own. By the power of the Holy Spirit, help us to examine our hearts and discern what loves compete and take over your love for us. Give us repentance and faith to believe the good news that we are yours both now and forever, forgiven and set free to love you above all things. Lord, in your mercy, grant healing according to your will and sustain in faith those for whom we pray, especially Buster, Paul, Richard, Gina, Beth, Casey, Richard, and Judy, also Brenda Martin, the niece of the Orth family, We also pray for the family of Monica and the family of Christy Hutchison, whose mother passed away. Lord, in your mercy, O Lord, we thank you for the many showers of rain and the refreshing of the earth that you have brought to this part of the earth. We pray that you would continue to sustain and provide our daily needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.